I've never met anybody who used the HANA alkalinity checker and then went back to another test kit. There's a reason why it has over 100 five-star reviews, that BRS uses it in all of their tanks, that Thomas loves it, and that I've used this checker here for over five years. It's because it's the easiest, fastest, and most accurate hobby level test kit available, and it's a great value. I test all of my tanks for alkalinity at least once a week. That allows me to make subtle changes in my dosing regimen as needed. I've especially found the checker extremely handy since I've started dosing Kalkwasser, as getting the right concentration can be a bit tricky when you're starting out. Out of all of the HANA products that I use, this alkalinity checker is by far my favorite as I'm able to test all three tanks in under three minutes. How does HANA accomplish this? Well, let's start by taking a peek at what's inside the box. The DKH colorometer comes with a plastic storage case, the checker itself, a AAA battery, a bottle of reagent good for 25 tests, a one milliliter plastic syringe and tip, two 10 milliliter cuvettes, an instruction manual, and a quick start guide. All HANA colorometers use a beam of light to give you a digital result. The light is passed through a cuvette with plain tank water to give you a baseline, and then after the reagent is added, the light passes through the cuvette again reading the difference between the two and translates that difference into a digital DKH readout. The HANA alkalinity checker can measure between 0 and 20 DKH in your saltwater aquarium with an accuracy of plus or minus 0.3 DKH. It also has a 10 minute auto shut off feature to help you save battery life. To get your HANA checker ready for action, use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the base plate. Insert the battery and reinstall the base plate. Testing for carbonate hardness in your tank is easy and here's how. If I'm remembering correctly from my high school chemistry class, the water will curve a bit at the top due to its attraction to the glass. For the most accurate reading, the lower portion of the water should be at that 10 milliliter mark. That means that the edges of the water that are actually touching the cuvette will be a bit higher. Place the cap on the cuvette and wipe down the outside. Press the button on the checker to turn the unit on, slide the cuvette into the checker and close the lid. The checker should now read C1, which means it's ready for the base sample. Press the button again and wait until C2 appears. Snugly place the plastic tip onto the syringe and draw one milliliter of reagent into the syringe. For any beginners out there, I have two pointers for you. First, none of the reagent will actually enter the syringe. The entire one milliliter will be contained in the tip. And second, you'll notice that the plunger has two black rings. Draw the plunger up until the lower ring rests at the 0.0, .0 mark. Remove the cuvette from the checker and add the reagent. Secure the lid and then invert the cuvette five times. It's really important here that you don't shake the cuvette as all of those bubbles can skew the result. Wipe any fingerprints off the cuvette and then slide back into the the checker. Press the button and wait for the results. Be sure to rinse and dry the cuvette, the cap, and the plastic tip after each use before storing it. I always like to have an extra bottle of reagent on hand as well as a couple of cuvettes for when I inevitably drop one. If you're sick of other alkalinity test kits having to read the results with your eye, click here to purchase our favorite. And as always everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reading. Be well. We'll see you next time.